Good morning, CG. I'm Alec. And I'm Maddie. And we have your CGTV broadcast for Friday, January 20th. Both the varsity and junior varsity show choirs will begin competing this month, which means that they spend extra time practicing and preparing. Marzi Workman brings you an inside look at the program before the pre-contest show next week. Starting next month, the competition season for both the junior varsity and varsity choirs kicks off with their first competition at Fishers on February 4th. However, many students are unaware of what the competition season is and all that it includes. Emmy Lockhart is one of the company managers of Sound System, and Chelsea Keish is one of the company managers of Debtones. It usually starts right when we get back from Christmas break and then lasts until about the end of March or so and then that's when we start working on our spring show. But um, at a choir competition, uh, usually junior varsity choirs and varsity choirs will perform and if you're in a varsity choir we have a prelims competition which is you do your whole show which is usually right about 20 minutes or a little bit under and you perform that and then you have um, awards around the middle of the day at least for sound system and then they tell you the final groups that will perform that night so if you make it into finals um, then usually we'll go and we'll change a few things make the show a little bit add some you know uh, add some things to spice it up a little and we'll have this really good big pep talk and then we'll go perform really late at night. It usually ends up being like 11 p.m. you know um, so we usually perform around 11 p.m. or so sometimes later sometimes a bit earlier for our final show and then after that is awards and then that's like the big deal awards at midnight or whatever at the end of the day and then yeah after awards when hopefully we win then we go back home. In preparation for the competition season, all members of the choirs dedicate many hours to perfecting their performances. So we do a lot of things behind the scenes people may not know about. Um, we run every single day. Um, we have hours and hours of practices. Uh, we really pick apart everything from vocals to choreography to how we walk on and off stage and anything in between, just to make sure we have a really tight and clean show. Well, I will say our biggest preparation the entire month of January, we usually have practice every single day of the week, um, sometimes on weekends too, usually around three hours or so, a little under two to three, and it is so awesome. It's just every single person in there is working so hard for in it, like this entire month to make the show as prepared and amazing as it can be because at the end of January, we always have our pre-contest um, pre show and we want that to be the best it can be because it's like the first glimpse at our competition show for the year. So the entire month of January is just really important because it's just all of that preparation, the time, the effort, the sweat, all of that, that combines to make our show so great. The close bond among members of the choir is important for the chemistry of the performances and competitions. So this year I'd say we really have gelled together as a group um, and I think Everyone brings something unique to the table, and we all have just really gelled together, and we're all really close, so I'm really excited to see where we do this year. Well, honestly, during this season, I love our show so much and the theme. I think it's amazing, and since it's my senior year, I'm just kind of excited to, like, soak it all in upstage at all these competitions and just have a good time, you know. And I honestly love um, putting in all the work that goes into it because it just makes the payoff so great, and I love working with all these amazing people, so I'm just excited to, like, soak that all in. The choir will perform their first pre-contest show next Tuesday at 7. Thanks, Marzier. Tickets are still available for the pre-contest show at centergrovechoirs.org. There are many different bands at school, but one in particular has a different role. The pep band plays courtside at many basketball games during the season. Logan Meyer and Emma Watson have a closer look at their performances. Pep band is a group of band students that play at some of the Center Grove basketball games. Pet band um, is it's a group of band students, so they're all in a band class, and they uh, get together and just play fun pop tunes, rock tunes for our basketball games. Um, we do uh, several boys and girls basketball games. Uh, this year we have 70 members in the group, so uh, it's just a lot of fun. Um, you know, we don't have to rehearse a lot. Uh, a lot of the people already know the tunes, so um, so yeah, that's basically it. It helps to add a little bit of excitement, a little bit of entertainment to our basketball games. The director of the pep band, Mr. Bola, believes that pep band provides a unique experience for students outside the classroom. Well, um, I think it, it, it adds a social environment. Um, we're definitely playing different music than we would in a classroom. Um, 
I get a lot of pop music, so so it's just a lot of fun. Um, it kind of kind of uncovers, um, you know, the, the kids are playing music that they've heard before, <laughs> which isn't always the case in, in the classroom. So it's just a lot of fun. For players, pep band is a relaxed and fun way to play your instrument with new people. It's just really fun. Like you kind of get to do whatever. It's not like marching band football games where it's like very like together and very like organized. It's very, um, it's just really fun. It's just like a different environment, uh, very different people, uh, new people that didn't do marching band, do pep band, uh, and you get like different like concert band people there too, like different experiences. Um, I originally wasn't too sure if I wanted to do it, um, but it's not that big of a time commitment. Um, we only play a few different games um, for basketball, and that's about all we do. So it's it's a lot of fun and. The games are pretty interesting to go to and watch. I enjoy watching basketball, so if you enjoy sports and you enjoy playing your instrument, I would definitely recommend it. Though Pep Band is a more laid-back environment, first-year member Bree Pyers and fourth-year member Bella Swango believe the experience helps them in the classroom as well. I probably learned that I'm able to sight-read really well, and that's basically where you look at a piece of music and you're able to just read it off the top of your head. Um, obviously, at this point in Pep Band, I've been playing the same music for like four years, so it's not that hard to me anymore, but originally it was really good for me to just be able to uh, look at new music and play stuff that I know. Definitely like to adapt to certain people better. I guess like getting used to like different scenarios. Bola believes Pep Band is a great way for members of the community to see and experience a band in person. It's, it's a great way for us to get um, recognized and noticed in the community um, outside of just our, our own parents that come to our concerts. Um, you know, we, we, a lot of people that don't usually get to hear the band get an opportunity to hear the band. Um, the, you know, those people that attend basketball games, which, which is a pretty large number of people. So, so yeah, some community exposure. Come see the Pep Band play this Saturday for the boys' home basketball game against Ron Colley at 7.30. Thanks, guys. Megan Fry often spends her weekends at the Epic Climbing and Fitness Gym. There, she works with her dad as a rock climbing team. Genevieve Konijinski takes a look at this sport. Megan Fry, a sophomore, has spent her free time rock climbing for the past five years. My family moved here like seven years ago, and... Um, my dad just kind of asked me and my sister one day, hey, would you guys want to try rock climbing? And it just, it just kind of stuck. She works as a team with her dad, who has learned the sport along with her. It's let us, it's kind of helped us learn to communicate more and to solve problems together, because obviously we're not right next to each other talking, but um, it's kind of helped us learn to understand each other differently. Her and her dad share many of the same philosophies when it comes to climbing. You need to follow logical steps. Climbing, you, you have to plan your route, where you're going, what, uh, you know, what, what's, the, I mean, literally, what is the next step you're going to do. Megan's climbing experiences have informed her methods, not just in climbing, but in life as well. I was bouldering, and I had just kind of pulled myself up over the top ledge, and, but I either, like, I slipped or I fell, but I was on the top ledge, and then I wasn't. So, um, but that really taught me a lot to, like, Always check your footing, always make sure you are where you think you are. I mean, rock climbing, is, it's made me a healthier person and I think happier too because you, it's not like a, it's not like a volleyball game where it, there's like cheering and yelling and rock climbing is just kind of a um, you and yourself kind of sport and you can determine like, there's no points, there's no scores, there's no teams to beat. It's just you and the wall and you can climb and just think. Whether or not Fry is climbing, the lessons she's learned will stick with her for the rest of her life. Thanks, Genevieve. The boys basketball team has had a 14 and 1 start, led by a team of experienced players. Joey Smith, who averages about 14 points per game, is one of the offensive weapons. Evan Nyswinger brings you the story. It's been a rocky road to the top for varsity basketball player Joey Schmitz. Last season, an injury-prone Schmitz was a contributor on the Trojans' 11-13 and 13 basketball team, a role that he knew he could improve on with hard work. You know, last season I was coming off an injury to start the season, and this year I, know I just got straight into it and the work in the offseason, being with my friends and just working was good. It's kind of an assumed role. I knew that I was 
probably going to be a major part when, since we lost a couple seniors last year and we needed some more scoring and I knew that I could do that. Starting shooting guard Ethan McComb says Joey's development has been a game changer and says Schmitz has stepped up in shooting and creativity. And he actually started hitting a lot of big shots in close games for us, and this year he's our most reliable option late in the shot, uh, late in the game, and um, when the late quarters, if we need a last second shot, balls in his hands to make a play and create for other people as well. So he's really stepped up in that role as well. Schmitz recognizes that he's a part of the bigger picture, the team's success, and his role can change from game to game depending on the flow. Just my role changes every game depending on what the production of other players is. If I need to step up, I will. But, you know, if I'm there, I'm there. Joey Schmitz has more than shown his role on the Trojans this season. A starter, Schmitz is averaging 13 points per game and points out that chemistry is a big part of his and the team's success this season. You know, just playing with these guys probably was my favorite part. You know, we're all together in the locker room. It's probably the most fun I've ever had in a season playing with a group of guys that I like. So when you got a team chemistry off the court, it translates on, onto the court because you know, you play together, you know how each other plays, you like playing with them. It just makes it all around a great time. With his success has come a few star moments. Schmitz was the leading scorer against Carmel this year, where the Trojans defeated the Greyhounds for the first time in 11 seasons. A game he says had a big impact on their season. I would definitely say the Carmel game, not only just because I played well, but because it was a great team win. It was history, right? We haven't beat them in 11 years, and we did this year. And then probably the greatest moment of people rushing the court after the game. Like, that's just a great feeling. Yeah. Joey's hard work and visible progress has taken him to the next level. And without a doubt, the Trojan team as well. Thanks, Evan. That's all we have for you today, CG. Bye. Bye.